Good morning. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Katie. It's Kate and Janice from Beadshop.com yes. live on Facebook. If it's Wednesday, it must be Redwood City Live. <laughs> <It's> Redwood City <laughs> Facebook Live. That's yeah. right. So it's Kate and Janice in front of the camera. Grace is behind the camera, and Emily's also yes. here as well. So we, the party is in the house. It is. It is. I'm we excited. Have, we have so much. Let me turn. I don't know why we're doing posing like we're in a prom. It's <laughs> kind of like a prom picture, right? Yeah. We're kind of prom picturing here. <laughs> <laughs> Emily just turned on her Facebook Live, so you might have heard some oh, reverb. Okay. So that's why she ran away okay. while we were. That's okay. It's live. That's what happened. What are we doing today? I don't know, besides uh, posing for a prom picture. Well, I think we're going to do a fun project. We and are. It's one of, uh, one of our favorites. Most popular stretch therapy. stretch therapy. Yes, and it's all about elastic and elastic cord and how fun and easy it is to string. And... It's the perfect thing. Yeah, it's the perfect that's summer we, project. That's why we call it stretch therapy. Because right. it's, ah, oh, <laughs> breathe it in. Yes. yes. Let it out. Exhale. We love it. Yes. So before we get to that, I've yes. got a couple of orders of business. Okay. What is all that arm candy uh, right? you have? Right? So I guess you're wondering about my arm party, Janice I, Parsons. I am. I am. So I've got some new, I don't know, Gracie, if you can kind of show what, you know, I like to do. say, show us your stack. I've got some new cool stuff that I'm wearing um, yes. that were, so right now, Janice and Emily and I and um, some, and, and really everyone here at beadshop.com, it's always a team effort. We are talking about what our new, what our Facebook Live is going to be for the summer, uh -huh. right? Making our schedule. And um, I have been playing around with creating stacks and stacks of things to go on your arm, right? Some cool bracelets. We've got some new product that we're going to be sharing. Or um, around your neck. Or around or your around neck, around yeah. Or around your ankle. Exactly. But we've, we're getting some of this really cool new woven wire. We've got some new charms from TiaraCast. And some new ways to so, use so, our leather. So leave it alone mm -hmm. for a minute so everyone I'm can arranging. see it. I'm arranging. Stop fetching. I like to leave, arrange. Leave, leave, let's show it. Okay. Look at there. How beautiful it is. <laughs> I like to look Now we're going to get lots of hearts because right. people can actually see what's right. on your arm. There we go. It's I'm true. excited. When do you think we'll do, we'll do the arm candy? I don't know. Well, but we're going to we're going to we're working we're out scheduling. that schedule. Yes. And so what this leads me to you guys is to let us know if there's anything you'd like us to teach on Facebook Live or something, you know, maybe it's something we haven't done before or revisit an old favorite. But in the next week, two weeks or so, mm -hmm. we're really, you know, adding our, pulling our schedule together. Especially so. now with Emily's skills mm -hmm. with, of all things, Kumi Hemo. Right. <laughs> Kumi. Uh, Kumi. Kumi. I know that you're not a huge Kumi I'm Hemo not. fan, but it's super I fun. I am not. But I am, look at, look at. I, I am not convinced it well. even belongs. I'm sorry, <laughs> everyone out there. I just, what's what's I without the love for Kumi Hemo? I don't, I don't know. It's something about the the braiding of the oh. string. It reminds me of certain fabrics when I go shopping. Oh. I never want to put wear them. Oh. I don't know, but there's well, so much to Kumi Hemo, and I, I need to open there's my eyes. It's going to be super exciting. This is another piece that Emily yeah. made that I grabbed out of her stash today, and it's kind of a riff on something we're going to share with you guys, too. But yeah. isn't this a beautiful, it's really beautiful nice. piece? really nice. And it also brings me to, I wanted to point out, a lot of you guys have been loving on, and Grace, you have a question. Yeah, someone's asking if that's beat along wire. It is, it is. It, this is a, a, a square wire, a brand new product from them, for them that we're bringing in, isn't mm -hmm. it cool? And the wide copper bracelet that Kate has on. You know what crochet. this is, this one right here? This the is our de uh, debut. Yes. It's our debut with our cornerstone. Uh, so if you go to our projects page, you guys, on beadshop.com, and you go to, it's under Tricks to Looming, I think. You click on Tricks to Looming, you'll find Debut. And we call and it Debut because it was the very first thing we did on Facebook Live. And it'll also be in episode notes. Yeah, it'll be in I'll, our episode notes. I'll have notes. a link in everything we talk about uh, today <clears throat> will go on to episode mm -hmm. notes. And th could I just... Yeah, sure, interject point. so then I can okay. strike so, it off my list. Yes, take it. So, for everyone out there, I love doing episode notes. It's just a little too 
challenging to get it done by Friday. Yeah, because we have so much information in them. And wanting to add all of the emails and the projects we show mm -hmm. on the computer and links. And so if you have the patience, we're going to now post them on Monday. Yeah. So and so episode notes, if you guys don't know about them, it's something that we have instituted just a couple of episodes ago. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of just a... Um, Kind of the cliff notes version of what happened in our broadcast anything and have like particular links to things we talk about so it's kind of all the funny the funny picture of you holding the up funny the funny picture if is, i find yes. things funny <laughs> that i don't want you to miss i will put She'll it in put the them episode in. Notes. Yes. so the episode notes is a good way to find all the links and the info um that we share on each episode yeah. so it makes it easier for you to go back later on um but one of the things so so they are a lot of they're a lot of work though, and you do such they a great are. job they, on them. I love doing yeah. them. It's but, so we're just giving you a little is, more yeah. time. So I need, I need an extra day mm -hmm. because then they need to be proved and the links mm -hmm. have to be put in. So and so you can also find them. Uh, we do a link on our blog as well. So if you don't mm -hmm. know about our blog, it's called the Bead Table. There's a link to it if you go on our homepage. You scroll down. There's a link to our blog. There's all kinds of great information that goes mm -hmm. on there on our blog as well. So you can always check there because if it's posted early, it'll post a link um, mm -hmm. onto our blog. Yep. Yeah. Question. Uh, where are the notes posted? The notes are usually on our uh, Facebook page. If you go to our website beadshop.com, we have a Facebook Live landing page for each of our Facebook episodes. So if we're here on our homepage on beadshop.com, we click on Facebook Live. And you can see, here's today's stretch therapy. Yay, it's loading, sorry, loading, loading. But like last week for In the Garden, um, you can go right here, you'll see the video. We post the video after the Facebook Live um, goes. And we also have this button that says download episode notes when they're ready. And so here's the episode notes that Janice has done, and here we are. And it also has a timestamp of different things. So if you're like, that's great, Kate and Janice, but I want to go right to the point where you guys actually talk about, you know, the sample you showed, or this sample, or, you know, whatever. So you can go in and you can kind of see um, all of the um, things about and then the episode. I'll notes. add in, like, if you just scroll mm -hmm. up again. Where I add it, no, too far. Go, too far. Keep go, keep going. A little, keep going. Almost there. One more. One more. One. So then, then there I added all. I talked. We talked about tricks to laddering. Mm -hmm. So I added, you know, a screenshot mm -hmm. of all the tricks, the projects with mm -hmm. a link to the project. So cool. I like to. It's not just regurgitation. It's like, okay, if I were out there watching all of this, what would I want to know? Mm -hmm. And and we rely a lot on you out there, especially like Gita, who does so much for linking. Uh, linking, we love our Gita. But, uh, but I want to make sure that everyone can find, you know, mm -hmm. oh, oh, where is that? Where, you know, mm -hmm. so that's what we do. Yeah, question, so crazy Grace. This might be more appropriate for in a few minutes, but Whitney's asking if we have more information on our website about putting colors together. Yes, so we do have, and, and we'll talk about that in just yeah. a second, actually. Mm -hmm. So let's save that thought. Um, we have an, one more house cleaning thing that I wanted to share with you. And, you know, uh, we get a lot of info and a lot of emails and stuff from our customers. And we had a customer email that really coincided with an experience that I had with some beads that I was using. Now, some of you may have been following my adventure with my three wrap loomed piece that I'm making. And I've been wearing it pretty much constantly. And one of the beads that I've been using or that I did use in it was this Mayuki Delica in um, the bright copper plated. And these are I should take the cue right from the name, they're plated. So with heavy wear, I wanted to share with you guys, some of that copper is actually coming off of the bead. And, and it came off quickly. Yeah, pretty quickly. Like within, within a month. Yeah, a few weeks Yeah, of super heavy wear. So I think maybe it's something that we might want to file for a future Facebook Live or to talk about coatings. And because now so many beads are coming out with coatings, with different colorings, dyeing, all of that kind of stuff. And sometimes it's really hard to keep track and, of what does what. And also Miyuki is now sending 
beads to the Czech Republic to be coated. Mm -hmm. And at the rate they're coming up with new shapes, new coatings, and I, I don't want to say it's mainly guys doing this, but it's a lot of people who don't bead who are now in charge of putting these coatings mm -hmm. on. And they're not necessarily going or taking road the time. Road testing them. Mm -hmm. They're road testing. They're just saying, oh, that looks good. Let's do another coating. Mm -hmm. And so it's only with time that w that we're finding, especially with wrap bracelets, with y with yours mm -hmm. where you wore one. I wear it one, all the time. Mm -hmm. One layer is on top of another. The Delica is a flat bead more so than a rounded one and it's just exposed mm -hmm. and it's um, just coming it's yeah, just coming so off and you know i'm not I'm overly fast and, i'm going to try and find a replacement mm -hmm. for it that is when uh, you galvanized get, when you get duracoat galvanized it's a bit better but with any of the beads that are actually metal coated mm -hmm. Um, over or glass. most of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, and I just want to share this with everyone. When we first started carrying the seed beads, I grew up with my mom selling beads in her store. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we noticed back in the 60s is the paint peeled off the pearls, the coatings peeled off the glass mm -hmm. seed beads. And so when we started carrying these again, we were checking every single bead, especially the ones that are metal coated because and that's why we carry the metal coated metal seed beads mm -hmm. so like the because they will stay on forever mm -hmm. compared to the old but when you're working with glass and you're expecting a coating to stay to adhere to a glass it's just like if you were home with the kids and you were painting a glass pitcher with poster paint mm -hmm. if it's not properly sealed if it's not heat treated correctly mm -hmm. or, or if it goes under a lot of wear and tear yeah. it's going to start to coat off exactly and we exactly. also had a customer email and we wanted to share that with you these uh unions yes um these guys um, they're japanese they're also japanese, japanese with a check coating mm -hmm. and she did have some issues with wear and pretty, tear on these pretty bad pretty, yeah and where pretty she quickly. made she makes jewelry mm -hmm. and um and had to recall mm -hmm. all of it and and, and like if it chipped like within a week yeah and if so. we were using these like on an earring that didn't rub or whatever you know you're using on an earring mm -hmm. project it's probably gonna last a little bit longer right. but if we're really into the wrap bracelets and wearing these bracelets 110 percent right. of the time you really do need to expect some of that yeah grace question can you explain that this is a Free Tip Friday piece that you're showing mm -hmm. and that to show how to make this piece you can go watch that? Yeah, that and I'll Friday. give you that Free Tip Friday and we'll put it in the episode notes as well, yes. you guys. But that Free Tip Friday, let me tell you. And I think what we'll do in the episode notes and in the Free Tip Friday, we will put a replacement hmm. option yeah. instead of this. What we're, it was, what we're and not, excuse me just one second, Janice, it was the Seed Beads and Looming Free Tip Friday on 4 7 17. And you can go um, right how do you find into it, Kate? our, uh, you can also go, hold that thought, you can also find it right on our YouTube page. If you go to beadshop.com, our YouTube page, and you'll find it there. You can also, if you put, and I have an info chart for it, if you go, I sure can, if you go to our keyword, whoops, our search box, and I typed in free tip Friday. You can see seed beads and looming free tip Friday. I clicked on that. This page came up and that also where, has the chart, mm -hmm, right? Where yeah. that chart is. So you can see there's, um, sorry, my computer's running so slowly today, you guys, sorry. It's coming, it's coming. So the seed bead chart and everything that I use, but it's a good companion piece to that but we'll put it in um, in the um, episode notes. So I think th not to d belabor this and mm -hmm. not to make you like totally nervous out there is that you may come along, you know, a lot of these new beads with coatings and uh, you have to try it out, mm -hmm. especially if you sell your jewelry, you have to take a little time and make a piece and wear it Mm -hmm. and see how it wears. Mm -hmm. Even um, if you just string a simple little yeah. strand of them and wear them, you don't have to complete yeah. a super fancy piece, but we do. We just got some new seed beads in that we're testing out and we kind of 
left them in the sun to see if they right. bleached. Uh, we let them sit in a cup of water for the weekend to see if they flake. Yeah. So we do, we also try and test a lot of our things. But now with so many beads coming yeah. out, um, it's the metallics that you kind of really want to um, keep out, keep an eye out for. Yeah. So, so we okay. wanted to share that with you guys. Okay. So um, real quick, let's fly through a couple more things and then let's get started because we've got some stretch therapy yes. to get to. Um, we've got a couple of um, viewer, uh, our viewer mail episode, mm -hmm. and we had said, we had talked earlier about um, one of the first projects that Emily's going to be doing for us, which Maybe is crochet. Better. I am. Why? I, no, yeah, I just, I, I can't. I, come on, Janice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm going fast. I'm going as fast no, as I I'm can. No, I'm just... No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, oh, Janice. Okay. Lucy and Ethel are at it again. Um, but you guys, Gita sent us, I'm trying to make it bigger That's too. so pretty. She sent us, these are from our wonderful uh, Gita in Denmark who is just sends us really great photos and some of you know her from our comment section and she mm. does all that great linking. But she has done some crochet and she's done some crochet with wire. Um, Emily's going to be jumping in. We're going to be doing this in May at the end of this month, Em, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing just starting with some basic crochet. But I thought that the crocheted piece that Gita sent us was really beautiful. There's some up close um, pictures and it looks like, and she described, I think she did three separate strands that she then joined. And you can see she's joined them she here with some wire water, wrapping, yeah. twisted them together. And does that one want to load? That might be all of, let me see. I that think she just everything. had three. Three, yeah. Great. And so they're so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Gita. And so really. it's for things that are coming. Yes. It'll be really exciting. And then Janice, you sent me something. Did from, I? Did I right? Can't remember. Yes, you did. What did I send? Remember you? this nice lady of her almost five-year-old daughter Daphne? Oh yeah. Helping her string. Yes. So I just thought it was super cute. So Stephanie, you sent us, and I'll turn this around. She and her almost five-year-old daughter, um, Daphne, helping her string, and she, you guys watch along on YouTube, and so there we thought it was really fun that, cute? that the family that beads together, and so yeah. she gave us permission to show a picture of her daughter yeah. beading, yeah. which was really, really cute. So we thought that was fun. Yeah. That brought a smile yeah. to our faces. So Stephanie. Sure. Yeah. Stephanie, Stephanie says, that's my baby. Oh, yeah. there she is. So yeah. thank you, Stephanie, so cute. for sharing it. It really brought yeah. a smile to yeah. us. So thank you so much. And we also had, it wasn't an email, but it was a call. And we actually got a call this morning, and Ivan, um, who you hear, sometimes if you call us, you'll hear Ivan answer the phone. So Courtney, you called us this morning, and it was really cool that you called and you and Ivan chatted, but I wanted to share a little uh, story. She loves our website and our videos. I'm just she says, thank you so much. Do it, just little, put it on. She me. loves um, spending only $40 to make a $250 bracelet. She loves that wow. too. And she also taught her son how to bead. Oh, and how her, old is he? her son, well, I'm, I'm guessing he's probably around in high school, or maybe, maybe not, maybe he's younger, but he made a bracelet for his crush. Oh, okay. so, I love isn't that. that nice? Yes. He's so, smart too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing, I know. Nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing wins yeah. a lady's heart. Nothing like making her jewelry. <laughs> oh. jewelry. So, Courtney, thanks for calling yeah. and sharing your nice story. And Ivan thought was really touched by it. So he and he, to to um, all to all the uh, they, to all the husbands <laughs> out there, yeah. Mother's Day is coming up. That's right. Impress that woman you know happy wife happy life that's right <laughs> and make her something right so and and people are and yes people are wondering people are so asking, this is yeah. our last thing we yeah. need to talk about is yes the retreat the retreat now i know that you guys maybe have seen and i posted it on facebook we have uh save the date out for our first ever um bead shop uh retreat i'm going to go here to our our front page, our home page here, because if you haven't seen it, you can go right to our home page on beadshop.com, and there's a save the date, and it's the Color by Design Bead Retreat. And, and it goes to the blog now. It does. So there's a link, link over to the yeah. blog, 
and you can see some of the stuff we're going to do. But getting back to the question, I think it was that Tif Tiffany asked about color, yes. right? Was um, here on, on Bead Shop and, and when we had our brick and mortar, color was super important to us, okay? And it still is. And we um, have a whole section on our website that Janice, you and the team put together that's all about color and divides all of our product into color, um, mm -hmm. you know, color categories. So if we click on blue green, everything in blue green is here. And so you can just kind of play around with color that way. Um, but one of the things when we were tossing around ideas for our retreat, and Emily and Janice and I were talking about it, and Grace and I were talking about it earlier. One of the things that we really do, and we do very well, is color. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to teach color or to have people absorb about color um, when we're far away, when we're here mm -hmm. and you're, you're over there. So I, we thought that it would be a great way for our inaugural retreat to go uh, to do a whole series on color. So we have some samples here, and you can talk a little bit too about what you're wearing. But the Save the Date Retreat, and info is going to be out on by May 15th. Yes. It'll be up to yes. sign up for the retreat. We only have 25 slots, so it's right. going to be large enough to have a good group, but it'll be intimate enough so everybody will get to know each other really well. And it's going to be September 15th through 17th. In, at a retreat center in San Juan Batista, California, yeah. which is the heart of California. It's a beautiful, beautiful little town, and the retreat center is amazing. My mom and I go there for quilt retreats a lot. And so for those who cannot make it to the retreat, we're also going to be over the summer and into the fall drilling down more on um, color mm -hmm. and design. So what you see here are the the wonderful beads by Emily um, we're going to on Friday night stain the beads and also bead the beads yeah like learn this. a cool yeah. netting technique and then Aren't they on, amazing? Yeah, and Emily then, they're so they're, beautiful they're gorgeous and then on Saturday we're going to um, build a bracelet or a necklace where color is the guide and mm -hmm. we're going to be talking more and more because even though teaching color uh, may seem challenging it's actually fairly effortless because everyone has their own color mm -hmm. like their uh, fingerprint they have their own color story mm -hmm. and so what we I think are really skilled at is helping people drill down to find their color print right their inner color right their, right so once you find that then the rest is easy yeah. and so we will next week we're going to start on the journey of really immersing ourselves again in color mm -hmm. because I can't design anything without mm -hmm. thinking of color first yeah. so I'm and so excited. the necklace that you're wearing Janice that's a that's a piece from these that's a is from very the past, old isn't it? school I have two on mm -hmm. and um, they are basically treasure necklaces mm -hmm. they're strung on the soft flex mm -hmm. um, and it's just a bowl of beads and we're going to be talking next week that's why I yeah. wore them about how do you do this kind of random you've got a mix of beads um, how do you take into account your your uh, your neckline that mm -hmm. you're wearing yeah we're going to talk about how to uh, measure your neckline right. we've got a great little um, so worksheet for right. you and stuff right. So all that's and then how to design week. randomly mm -hmm. um, and and multiple strands mm -hmm. and we're going to relaunch uh, a product we have not been using for years, which is Softlex. Yes, I love Softlex. You, you, I was like, let's you get made that me bring back it in. back. I and, did, and now I am thrilled. I know. I'm like, I love it. How do, it's like, how did I have this house without a flushing <laughs> toilet? Right. Like. You know? How did like, we do it without the soft How flex? did we do it without a kitchen? But and, and Gracie, it looks like Gracie had a quick question. I, I did. I just didn't want to forget to ask yes. this because there have been so many comments in between. Someone asked, how do we glue the knot? I'm not sure if she's talking about your necklace or if she was talking about the, the beads over mm -hmm. here. I, 
I'm just throwing it out there. And then a lot of people are asking how much the retreat is, but this is just to save the date, right? right? This is to save the date. So all of the info about the retreat will be out on May 15th. And we have some different options, some like early bird specials, some deposit options and stuff. So all that'll be up. Right. Um, so um, hopefully it's going to be, I, we but think it's a really great your, value. It, it's and everything's one, included. Yeah, it's one yeah. price, everything's included. Your lodging, your food, your, you know, a, a lot of beads, a great goodie bag, hanging out with us. And well, not that, everything, not, not everything, everything is, not, not all the beads, of, not, not all no, of it. No, but some, but, a, but, a, but you're going to want to bring cool your stuff. beads. Yeah. You're going to want to bring your stash. But a lot of cool stuff is yes, included. Yes, yes. For sure. Yeah. We're going to have fun. And we're going to also go live from there. Yeah, we are. Yeah. So. And Sunday is a special day. Sunday's your birthday. Yeah, on the retreat, the Sunday of the retreat is my birthday. So we're going to have so a Which is in September. In September, September, September yes. 17th. Yeah, it's yes. going to be good time. Yes. I just had to mention, because I like to plan for my birthday all year. Yes, but no presents. No. Gosh, no. No presents. I have a house full of stuff. Yeah. I just want you to be there. No That's gifts. That's what I want. That's what I want. So, oh my gosh. So I think we've covered I all know. of our business. Yes. We've yes. got to get going. Okay. So... We're going to switch it up this yes, week. Yes, Grace, this is Grace's project. It is. So, so you know what we're going to do? Grace is going to... Yeah, we're going to pull gonna, it forward. You're yes. going to go... You and Emily are going to man everyone. the camera. And yeah. Gracie's going to come on this side. Yes. And you guys, we have so much um, to share with you about it. Hi, Gracie. Hey, Grace. Hey, oh, hey, my everyone. gosh. <laughs> isn't this exciting? It's so different being right? in front of the camera. <laughs> right? Isn't it? It's crazy. Oh I gosh. love it. I have so, my mug too. Right? It's not got, coffee. Oh, it's nice. warm water. It's warm water. It's <laughs> I was, my iconic. Right? Your iconic warm water. water. <laughs> I always tease Grace. We always tease her. We're all, Grace, would you like some coffee, tea, or just your warm water? <laughs> so, yes. So that's what, my cup has vodka. Nice. And, no, I'm just kidding. It just has coffee in it. Um, but, well, it's great to have, it's yeah, so, thank you. so excited. Yeah. You know, we chatted. Um, People are saying hi to you. Lots yeah. of hi, Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Oh, hi everyone. Yeah. That's great. It's so odd. <laughs> Isn't it? It's I so just have to fun. say that um, normally on Wednesdays, I dress like I'm going to the Olympics mm -hmm. because I have to be like super acrobatic <laughs> and like it's move. True. And today I look nice. <laughs> no, you I look always nice. Look nice. You do. No, no. But it's really true. If you guys could see, someday we'll take a photo of Grace and like her contortions where she's like doing this and this. It's pretty awesome. So Emily, Emily's, but Emily and, um, and Janice, Janice are minding the camera back there. So if you guys do have any questions or things that we need to holler out, what Grace usually does, this is her little thing. Question. Okay. As if this is so, the camera. Yeah. <laughs> her little thing. So just holler out and let us know. We'll be glad to answer So on some Friday, questions. when I did Free Tip Friday, do you remember when I put my hand over the microphone? Yes. So oh, uh, yeah. you're not going to do that, Emily, but I did. So well, you, have, you have a couple of folks who do also like the warm water, some with hot water and lemon. Oh, see? Yeah. Oh, so, nice. yeah. And they are also scoping out your wrists and necklace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Grace, so that people... Right. Hey, Grace. No, Kate. Hey, <laughs> so, why don't you why don't you tell everybody just a little bit? Sure. You do have some uh, some definite um, styles that you like, and some of the things totally. that you're wearing today. Totally. And I'm going to start pulling our stuff front and yeah. center while you tell people what's up with you. So, when I was hired at Beach Shop, um, first of all, I came and Janice interviewed me, right? Mm -hmm. And this was, I guess, in 2015. Yeah, it was 2015, and. Um, and I had told Janice that my grandmother and my mother have like a fondness for antiques. Yes. And so I'm wearing one of my vintage pieces. It's not marked, but it's one of my favorites. It's really I it's love so it. beautiful. I love it. And um, just as far as design goes, I like combining masculine, feminine, old, new. Mm -hmm. And so I, mean, I, like, I like different things. I like yeah. quirky, eclectic things, yeah. which is why I fit in here. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> We're all a little quirky and eclectic here at Beach no, Shop. Just like the, the family. Yeah, so this one this is my prairie, which I use the gold leather. And when um, here, I'll make it a little easier on you. I don't know how it is to be in front of the camera and display things. <laughs> yeah, I just right. know how to capture the right. image. But um, so when Jana showed uh, Karen and I the metallic leather, um, this was when we first launched Prairie. I gravitated towards the gold and I mm -hmm. like kind of like boho with like a hint of flash and yeah I love this yeah. gold leather thank you and it's wearing really it's well it's wearing really well you can you see know. where it's silver on the sides but it's not really 
It's really holding up well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I really love it. I love it too. Your arm party. party. Arm yeah, party. arm party. I love it. Really <laughs> Lots of thumbs up for that. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. So this was so you and Janice. Uh, started to create right. this project so tell me a so, little bit about how because i didn't right. actually even Stretch realize therapy yeah how this came about so, so i think it's a great I'm story grabbing some yeah let's grab some here right over here oops um so last year janice went to where we get our vintage finds and um i went with her i had the luxury of going with janice and it was a lot of fun and she found these amazing chips and i thought they were so fun And I was like, what are we going to do with these chips, Janice? And uh, we came up with stretch therapy because we just simply needed, well, whatever you wanted. But at the time, we used a six millimeter Czech fire polish, an eight millimeter Dakota stone or Mm -hmm. round, and um, a tassel. Mm -hmm. And Janice actually contributed to the project by adding some of the carved components. Which are so great. Yeah, Yeah, that are great. And and then stretch therapy was born. It was Mm -hmm. like the perfect summer project. And today we're going to show how you can mix it up and make it your own. It doesn't have to be exactly what we tell you to do. Yeah. Even Karen, when we first did it, she added the stretch uh, she added a stretchy bracelet of Padres mm-hmm. that were really fresh. Which really look great. Uh-huh. Yeah, And even Karen was like, we need a man's bracelet too. So we, we used this guy over here, mm-hmm. which we modeled on Ivan in our, yeah. in our banner shot. And so. it really looks, I think, you know, the, the mood beads. The mood that, was beads. A Janus, that was a yeah. Janice one. And the mood beads, you guys, if you haven't gone to our mood beads section, I, when I first came back on board in August, I was looking at what we had, you know, in our fulfillment room and looking at some of our stock. And I opened these mood bead drawers and I was like, holy cow, these are amazing. And I think that when sometimes when you see them online, you're like, oh yeah, interesting, right. or they change colors, or it's like a mood ring, but they really, they're really killer. Yeah. I just love them. And I like bugs too. And yeah. this one is the, the let it be. It's one of my favorite yeah. mood beads that we have. Yeah. But we're going to show how to, like other mood beads yeah. today that we didn't use in the first round right. of stretch therapy, so. And we have, so I wanted to show you, I have, um. We have water over there too. Oh, and I brought, I brought a little oh, water sweet. right here. So I wanted to share with you. What's your Janice is moving stuff around? Yeah, just, I just, I, carry I, on, carry on. There we go. Okay, I just I'm want it up a little uh-huh. higher well, so that going. we're not cutting off Grace. So better? Yeah. I think that's better. A little uh, one of these guys with a tassel on it, and some of you guys may remember the tassels that I like to use in our earring projects and stuff. And we use a lot of these also in our mala projects. And sometimes when your tassel sits in the drawer and stuff like this, it kind of looks like one of those crazy doll dolls, you know, like when you played with your Barbies right. a lot, right? And your Barbie hair came out like this. So I wanted to show you how you can fix that. And I have a little container of water here and I'm just gonna you can even of, just put it on your fingers. Yeah, finger and do it. Right. But I'm I just went the dipping route. <laughs> I immersed. And then I have a little a little um, paper towel here and I didn't get it super wet but like Grace says you can also I just felt like this one was so super right, right. Um, crazy crazy and then this will just kind of I just kind of let it kind of pull out like this and I'm just gonna set that aside and let it dry and it'll be just fine Perfect. if you have one you could do like if you wanted to tame it a little bit I could just get a little bit of water on my fingers and like Grace was saying just kind of put it back in order here like that. And that's how you kind of tame those tassels. Yeah. To make them Janice, back to normal. Janice taught me everything yeah. that I know about yeah. making oh, stuff. And she's yeah. she's a smarty and pants. You too, Kate. After well, you came on, I started learning some Well, I have a couple things. I know. I have a couple of tricks. A <laughs> couple of tricks up my sleeve. But like this one, the earrings that I wear, I when always before I put them on, I usually have to do something to them because I don't know if you guys are like me, but at the end of the day when I'm driving mm-hmm. home, I take off my earrings and I throw them in like the ashtray in my car or whatever. It's not even an ashtray anymore. I don't know what it's called now. Your little coin, yeah, your coin plates or whatever. So I throw them in there and then I drive home and then like in three days when I want to wear them again, I look at the tassels and I go, oh, I kind of put my, you know, another piece of jewelry or something on top of it. So I always have to kind of comb these back into shape. So you can do it again and again. Cool. They look great. So, all right. So 
questions so far? Yes. Um, we had multiple comments about um, the tassels, and thank you for baptizing them and getting them straight <laughs> out. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and we're thinking that we should lower Grace's chair because she's a little bit taller than Janice. Oh. So I'm tilting the camera back I mean, a little Kate. bit. I oh. mean, Kate. Well, or you too, because yeah. when you guys sit right. there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and just general love for you all. So oh, that's yeah. nice. Great. It's kind of coming out. Thank you. Do you want to put another thing? No, I think so I'm good. Yeah. I just, I okay. ended up. Let's okay. get that paper towel. We oh, made yeah. a cute little and thing. One more mm -hmm. thing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I just want to uh, say a big thank you to Gita because she's keeping up on the yeah. Um, linking. Yes, uh, Drea know. had to step away, so um, <laughs> Gita is, is holding down the fort. Oh, and you know, you guys, and I want to take a moment, just, it's been, we always have such a super frantic and crazy morning before our Facebook Lives, but I do want to take a moment and thank you guys always for, we get so many shares and likes yeah. and, you know, you guys watch these videos throughout the week and then further on, on our website on our YouTube channel and you guys email us and we really really appreciate all yeah. that love and it's the things that keep us motivated and if I can add on to that yes. I'm behind the camera so I read mm -hmm. everyone's comments and I can't always like I can talk the whole show yeah, right. I could <laughs> but um, I have to interject when I feel like it's appropriate so I just right. want to thank everyone out there for watching and saying hi sometimes I, I always smile when you do I just don't say anything so yeah. I really appreciate yeah. that it's it's a really different experience being in front of the camera <laughs> sitting <laughs> behind. I know. I uh, love it. So, so the stretch therapy project. You uh, you guys thought that the best thing to string it on is our stretch magic, yeah, and I think stretch magic is great. It's something that we used at the store quite frequently. I think though that sometimes people are a little stymied by mm -hmm. the stretch magic and, you know, oh my gosh, are my knots gonna hold? Mm -hmm. What's gonna happen? So that's some of the stuff we're gonna share with you today. One of the things right off the bat I wanna talk to you guys about is putting on a stretch bracelet. Um, way back in the day when stretch bracelets first came out, and Janice, I know you'll remember this, mm -hmm. the the Swarovski, Swarovski Crystal Bicone Bracelet. Yes. That, that's what started the stretch magic craze in the late 1990s. And people were just taking Swarovski crystals, stringing them on stretch magic, tying them up and wearing them till they fell off, right? So one of the things that we really learned from that first iteration using the stretchy cord was not to pull the bracelet apart. You know, it's not like a rubber band where you want to play with it, play with it, play with it, and then all of a sudden it breaks, right? With stretch therapy, with any of these stretch bracelets, tell your customers or yourself or your friends, what I do is I, they're meant to be rolled like this rather than pulled on like this. So just roll them on. That will keep the life of your elastic, even if it has a tassel on it, roll it on and then fix your tassel up. And I think that really makes these, um, the life last a lot longer. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and just to transition into mm -hmm. what you've done here, you're wearing two different stretch therapy bracelets. Right, like you mix that and I just match them. random. Yeah, just yeah. Random. it looks great. It does look great. Yeah. And that's one of the things um, that we're going to share with you today. We've got these great little, what Janice is called, little cash pose. Mm. She's made these great little right. um, well, these we, mixes. Well, we made them together. This was mm -hmm. the, originally the designs that, um, the colorways that Jen and Grace came together. Mm -hmm. And then um, I okay. just said, hey, why, why not just make, um, put them into little kits yeah. and then we can add a little of this and add a little of that and and because we want stretch therapy to be relaxing you know instead of listing 18 products why not just put them all in a little um a little cash flow yeah so so we have these new we have a couple of things we've got these new little bead um well they're like little bead trays little storage bead storage yeah, containers and they come with a lid like this and the way that our little kits, we've done kits in three different flavors, right? And we have, Janice, remind me of what they're called. Uh, Om Water, Om uh, Earth, Earth, and Om Sun. Sun. And they come in these little containers and they're easily just opened one at a time like this or you can just open them all up and take the whole lid off which is 
I didn't even realize this until you showed me this. Yeah, it comes off. I mean, isn't that awesome? And um, we're selling the containers just empty. You can buy yeah, them that way. Yeah. Or on the Facebook Live landing page, there's a link to each of these right. um, little little kits. Okay. So I'm going to start stringing. And Grace, you're going to start stringing. Can I just add about yeah. the kits, though, really yeah. quick? Is that, like, this example is own water, but you, you may have something that has something different in it. So this one has the new Amazonite chips. This one has the turquoise chips. So it's kind of like... A medley that we've picked for you that that goes well together that you can make something awesome mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily like you're gonna get this very exact same one it's gonna be a little bit different with some of our vintage finds too mm -hmm. so it's really cool yeah so it'll be a good way to um, to start pulling stuff together I now like the word medley medley it yeah. is nice so Grace you're gonna string and yes. you're actually gonna do one no needle right you're just gonna jump in and string yeah, it I right I just do no needle. Yeah, no needle. So <laughs> while you get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, we made, we have a really, it was a really good idea, a little surface um, to bead on. And Janice was like, Emily, this morning, she said, Emily, grab a paper towel. And so we grabbed a little paper towel and we're making these each seven inches long. So Emily did a nice little seven inch um measurer here which i thought was cool for my three bracelets and then shaking them out because why not right well, and if you don't have a fancy board at home yeah and you just want to know like how, how many, many you're using you or use whatever a bracelet you can use a paper towel and, and it's they nice won't, they won't wander everywhere yeah and so see how i can start to lay everything out over here, like oh, this. Got her up. Oh, a question M? I do have a question, um, and this has kind of come up with a couple of different, um, in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. Are you going to address later today, later in this broadcast, durability factor on Stretch Magic and ways to make that a little I am. longer lasting? I am. Um, okay. And matching your Stretch Magic then to the beads uh, that you've I chosen, am. the types of beads you've chosen. I am. Okay. Great. Thank you for reminding me That's of that. Because I'm going to talk about that as I do some stringing. Okay. So what I've done here is I've just done a little layout. Now this for me, layout wise, is a lot of layout. I usually don't do this much laying out because I like to go a little more off off the cuff, if you will. But sometimes it's good, especially if you're working from a mix of beads like this, to kind of allocate some beads to you, uh, you know, to each strand so you don't, I don't know, use up all of your glamour in one strand, right? So I just have this guy here Notice though, and this is what starts to get into kind of the mechanics of the piece. Notice how here I've got a bead that has a big hole. So that's where I'm going to be hiding my knot. And I've also thrown in my tassel and maybe I'll throw it in over here because the way that we string these with tassels is the tassel is just like another element in the piece. Okay, so maybe I'll actually, instead of having that one, I'll center the tassel. Um, that's what I'll do there. Okay, and I might need a few more. Notice how I'm not really like belaboring the fact. I'm just kind of laying everything out to keep everything kind of kind of together. So that's what I'm going to go with. Now, let's talk about the mechanics. This is the needle. This is the um, collapsible eye right? The collapsible eye. Flexible the eye. Flexible. Why? I'm going to have to write that down and tattoo it on my hand. This is the flexible eye needle rather than our collapsible eye. Mm -hmm. And yeah, would you Janice, I just want to show everybody the difference between them and why we're choosing this needle. Um, can you give me the drawer and I'll get them? So get while them. Kate's doing that, what I'm going to show is how Janice added the carved component onto the piece. So I picked one that went with this colorway and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap around one of the open spaces here and then I'm going to, when I have 
the needles, I'm going to go back through the elastic, through the bead, and when I have the other needle, I can, I can probably fudge it here. Yeah, get it through there. And then I'm going to tie a knot on the other side of this check, the six millimeter check. Did you check. need a little needle, Gracie? But I will yeah, need a little one. needle. I've got yeah. it right here for you. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so here and uh, one point. of the things that Janice actually talks about in the handout is this I don't know if you can see that, Emily, but mm -hmm. it's this hole, right? But it's a flexible eye, so when you have you, you have to push it through a smaller bead so that flattens a little bit, so it goes through the tassel. Mm -hmm. So I need to pull one of those out so I can flatten this. Do you guy. want this guy? Will that work? I think. Is that too yeah. small? Too Let's big? See if that one will work. And that's a really good tip because sometimes I think this is where, like, if you guys it's are local. working on poetry right. or the poetry project, you're like, wait a minute, this isn't fitting. You just have to get a little bit of an extra oomph to pull it through. And so collapsing. Actually, I did it the wrong way. I should have done it when it was on the elastic okay. so that if it does flatten, it flattens Flatten. with the elastic. Okay. I'm just nervous, you guys, because I'm in front of the oh, camera. Oh, no, you're doing but, just fine. Yeah, it's fun. And so see how Gracie's using that needle to go back through. And see how it needs maybe just a little extra tug or something. That's okay. Yeah. And see So you that see now? how it secures there? So what we did when we made the original, because Kate, you like doubling it, uh -huh. but I like just single. So I would have left one of these strands a little shorter and then tied the knot here, uh -huh. glued it. And then, and that's actually what Janice did, mm -hmm. glued it and then added the other, um, Beads the rest to wrap, whatever was left right, over. Stringing and then there. done the same thing on the other side where she goes through the hole and then back up again and then, and then ties that's it how up. it's secured. Mm -hmm. And you can change it so you can make it higher up so it dangles like how Janice has it here. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, Gracie. Reel me this, Gracie. Mm -hmm. Gracie Grace. <laughs> Could I, as I'm making this, could I make that the center? You totally could. And I could string it from this side and this totally. side, and then I could knot it back here too, of course. right? So this yeah. would be a way also, a variation, a variation yeah. on a theme, right? So mm -hmm. we could have it come where the piece is centered, or we could have it come so this is a little more like a tassel or a right. dangle. Right. Right. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this also is. A maybe for my own self a little more secure so if mm -hmm. one end were to pop off the whole but of course i mean i think you might be crimping later so maybe you could crimp yeah i could crimp like something with that. like that yeah so grace you're getting lots of support um oh, no yeah. everyone says you don't sound nervous or appear <laughs> nervous and i concur because oh, i'm right you. here on the scene that's right and you know, a couple of nice deep breath. Oh, thank you, everyone. So let me show you guys a little bit about these needles. Let's focus back here just real quick. So this is the collapsible eye needle that we also carry versus our flexible eye. And let me get, I had a flexible eye right here. Let me get one so you guys can see the difference. This is a question you guys would get a lot, like I mentioned before, in the poetry. When people are coming in, Oh, thanks, JP. Is that easier to see? Her roof. Um, see how this is a lot smaller, and this guy, this collapsible eye, the eye is bigger, but see how there's a little twist up at the top? This is a really handy needle if you're like stringing tough cord or if you're laddering, things like that. That little twist at the very top kind of locks your thread in as you're stringing. But if we're stringing on pearls or doing something that's small, we need this tiny flexible eye so that eye flexes down and tightens down. So you can see, see how I've got it here, how it's flexed What's down, flexed, and our bead is coming on like so. And see how I've doubled this in. Now this is a six millimeter um, semi-precious bead. And can you see the hole is a pretty big size. It looks maybe small for you guys, but it goes right on here on the Stretch Magic. Now I know you're wondering, Kate, well what size Stretch Magic are you using? We like this 0.7 millimeter because it's heavy enough to use singly but thin enough that we can double it when we want some extra, I don't know, extra oomph maybe, extra, an extra strand in there to give everything a little more 
um, a little more staying power. So can you see how, and um, it's just strings right on. Now one of the other ways that I do this so that my thread doesn't get, maybe it's better on the white, is that better Emily? Mm -hmm. um, so my thread doesn't get too fatigued, or my fret stretch magic doesn't get too fatigued. You know, let's go back to kind of the rubber band analogy that I was making earlier. You know how if you have a rubber band and you're playing with it and you're playing with it and you're kind of stretching it out, you can overstretch the rubber band so it loses its oomph, right? Same thing with this stretch magic. As you can see here, I'm knotting, I'm putting on a whole bunch of beads. I've got a whole line of them. I'm filling my needle with these beads as quickly as I can. Now, once I've got them on the needle, I gently pull my needle through so that my stretch magic is through the beads. And now I just lead the beads with a little, see how I'm gripping the, the stretch magic, easing it on down the road so it's a nice, um, smooth pull through the heads of the beads. What I'm not doing is pulling the stretch magic beyond endurance again and again and again. So by the time my bracelet is finished, my stretch magic is really fatigued. So we wanna set our stretch magic up for success as soon as we can. Okay, yeah, question. So we had a couple of questions about um, pre-stretching your stretch magic. Um, and also, um, choices about doubling. Mm -hmm. So, I don't pre-stretch. Janice, have you ever pre-stretched? No. Yeah, I no. would say not, just for these particular reasons. No, because the, the, the point of it is it stretches. Yeah. And when you finish your bracelets, you don't want to stretch them and then knot them. Right. You want to just pull them gently so that they can lay nicely, right. tie the knot, and then where the stretch comes in is when it goes over your wrist right. or your ankle. Right. It's n oh, uh, not really for over your head, mm -mm. not that much stretch. But you don't want to pre-stretch it or pull it tight because then when you put it over your wrist, it's stretching even more. Right. So and you don't want to pre-stretch to stretch any of the stretch no. out. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. So but it would, it, the, your one's intuition is let me stretch it. Right. But you don't, just, don't don't stretch yeah, it. Don't. Just leave it yeah. leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, at least that's how. Um, I want to show you guys also how to add, um, and I'll, then I'll get back to doubling versus not doubling. But I want to get back to maybe adding this tassel. Now the way that we carry our tassels, they come on this cord, right? And so you want to be really they're really delicate, and they have a tendency to um, there we go to. Um, want to come apart if if you don't do a few things to secure them right off the bat. So what I do is I take my my tassel very carefully off the cord. Okay? And what I do is I put it, can you see down the hole there, M? Mm -hmm. How yep, there's totally. a little opening and I'm going to come in to that opening really carefully with my needle Whoops, so carefully that I don't <laughs> grab the hole. Let's try that again. Now, Kate, Behind did it. you mm -hmm. did you talk about nope. flattening the needle before you put the oh, tassel on? Oh, I didn't. Oh. But that's a real that's what you, you do, right? Cuz I was going to mention That's why we use the flexible okay. eye because it's it doesn't have that bump at the end right. which is going to force your tassel open. Right, which which it's this too one does, heavy right? For the whole of the yeah. So what you do, Janice, is you come in before you do this. And this I actually use like a little gemstone or if you have one of your chips has a tiny hole I just put a bead with a tiny mm -hmm. hole. Oh, for this right on for it this and side. Take it right yeah, um, yeah, I showed how to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Grace okay. showed how to do that. But I was also thinking about the end here, since this is a twisted needle. If it is oh. splayed out at all, it will um, it'll poke. compromise mm -hmm. the fibers. Mm -hmm. So you have to take your time threading it into the middle, so it doesn't poke at the fibers, mm -hmm. and you'll know if it, as you're putting your needle through, right. if you get any resistance. Like I'm doing right now, I just need to again. look at it. 
and st and go again. Mm -hmm. But you want the eye of the needle already flat before you before you pull it through. Flat. Yeah, and so you can see here it's through, and I'm going to just slide everything on. And so I'm just treating this as if it were a charm or a bead. But see that? It's just going to sit there. Now at this point, what I want to do is I want to prevent this um, tassel from unraveling at all. Okay, so I'm just going to get my little plastic baggie and I'm going to look for the knot and I see it there. I'm going to add just a little bit. I've got runny hypo tube. So I'm going to add a little bit of my hypo cement there. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to add a little bit more there. JP, is that how you would do it? Yeah, because the tassel is held together by one little string. Mm -hmm. And you could add an extra string if you wanted mm -hmm. and then just kind of throw the ends into the middle and then cut it. Um, you could also, what I did here on the earring, um, I wrapped the tassel with, with a thin 28 yeah. gauge wire, which I think also looks terrific. Right. So you could do that too. Right. And we'll put that in the episode mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. There, I have a great hand on, yeah. on how to do this. Okay. So then I'll just keep, uh, I'll keep stringing. Yeah. Question. Well, actually, I, I uh -huh. want to Comment. say something. Oh. Um, Talk to me, Grace. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> um, you, were, you were talking about how to glue on a tassel, or how to secure the tassel uh -huh. so that it doesn't fray apart. But um, one of the things that I did was I added it to a jump ring. Right. I'm so going to add dangle. a jump ring. Yeah. I'm going to add one to this. Or You're you the have... queen of gauges All of right. wire, so you tell me what, what, wire, right. what wire might be well, best let me show as you. far as if we were going to add making a little loose. Let me grab tassel here. It's the wrong color, but it was just the one we had yeah. done before the show. So let me show you if I were going to add a tassel. I've got some seven millimeter or seven millimeter jump rings, and that is uh, a sixteen or an eighteen gauge wire, I think. And I've got my. I pulled my. Thanks, Emily. I know that <laughs> I pulled them out here somewhere just to add a jump ring on. And you guys have seen me do this again and again. But I open this guy up. And again, that careful little hole. Mm -hmm. And I just aim the tassel. I'm going to have to get a little closer to me, Emily, because I, I can't see it. Come back when you're ready. There we go. See how it's on there? And I'm just walking this on, making sure that every little fiber gets on there. It's almost there. There we go. See that? How it just sticks right on there? Now I'm going to close it. The jump ring is either closed or it's open. <laughs> so make sure it's closed all the way. Then what I do is that connection, I slide it. Once it's on the bracelet and once you've glued the tassel. Right. I slide that little jump ring that's nice. that open yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's there so it doesn't pull out. Right. Now I would come in with my... Oh, I see. See where I'm going with You're, that? I was thinking some, for some reason that I'd attach it with the jump ring no, to the stretch. Uh -uh. No, yeah, we're just yeah. using it like it's a bead. Like it's a bead, exactly. And so see here, I'm going to glue. I'll turn it over. You guys, wouldn't this make a great earring tassel just this way? I think it's a great idea, Grace. It looks really nice. Then I could, I would let it sit and we can just add it just like this, right? right? It's ready to go. But it's a great way, you know, one of my, let's change the nature of the show, get a head pin, put a bead on there and make an earring out of it mm -hmm. even, right? It looks really amazing. So I'm going to keep, I'm almost done with my string part I like here. what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Do you have something, Emily? Yeah, a couple, yeah, a couple of thoughts. Yeah. Um, I think folks would really love to hear what stone you're working with when you are, if you have that knowledge okay. and you want to share that. I do. Um, both both designs. Okay. Um, there's thumbs up for the wire and <laughs> um, Susan especially drooling on Grace's bracelet. Oh, yay. Well, yeah, um, it's great. So talk a little bit sure. about your design okay. thoughts behind this, Grace, while I finish this one up. So these are our new Amazonite chips. So we're using our Belize 8mm, which is also Amazonite. And then this is our um, 
Gosh, what is this one? I'm normally, like, when I'm behind tree the camera. Added. Yeah, tree, tree added. added. Which is called the green and white. Safe mm -hmm. Haven on our yeah. site. It's 8 millimeter. Um, and these are our safari. They are the matte African turquoise 8 millimeter also. So that's what's coming in my ohm water ensemble um, medley. And along with the, the nice Su Chow Jade pieces that these mm -hmm. are from our vintage, vintage, from vintage, finds. vintage finds. And then you have some fire polish. We have the fire polish 6 millimeter, and then we have our new roller beads. And mm -hmm. I'm actually close to being done, so what I would do is I use my roller bead as that large hole. I think you used that mm -hmm. earlier, Kate. And I'm gonna tie three knots on top of each other. This is actually what Cara taught us. Um, and then we're gonna glue that with GS Hypo cement. With, yeah, and so let me back up for just okay. one second. You're using that single strand, right? right? And you have those Amazonite chips, right. right? I think sometimes when you use a single strand, like we also have these guys here right. are, these turquoise are turquoise chips, chips, and those chips have a pretty darn small right. hole, and so it's a really great um, when you're when you're looking at your beads. It's great to step back for a moment and check out the different hole sizes mm -hmm. that you've got. Mm -hmm. So using that single strand, mm -hmm. I think is perfectly appropriate for those chips that you've got. And Sometimes that, though, mm -hmm. Kate, when you're doing like the turquoise chips, yeah, uh -huh. you, need certain, needle. Like, the you need a needle. Mm -hmm. You need the needle because mm -hmm. these are vintage chips, yeah. right? and they were cut when no one wanted the stones on the floor of the right. factory. They're not glass. right? So many of them come with small holes. Some of them you're just going to have to set aside right. and save for yeah. another project. Mm -hmm. This one. But, yeah. um, uh, Many, not many, but some of them are going to need the um, mm -hmm. the needle, the like needle, the flexible eye needle. And so one of the things, so kind of dovetailing on what you said there, Janice, and I'm sorry, Gracie, no, I want to come in. So let's say that we're putting the needle on, and you knew that you were working with pieces that were really small. What I would do is I would cut your um, stretch magic a little longer than usual. Oh yeah. Because what I would do here is when I take this chip that had a small hole. I would stretch, I'm going to yeah. get a little bit more there, I'd stretch that stretch magic down to um, thin it right. out right? and then pull this on. Right. Then I'd, I'd pull kind of that tail through maybe, and you can see that tail is kind of long, but I'd pull that through, get that out of the way, and then I'd pull it down on my piece. Right. This part of the stretch magic that you're working with up here at the top of your bracelet is going to get work worn. Yeah, yeah, it is. So this isn't something that you want in the body of your bracelet. You want to be able to cut this apart. So cutting a longer length of thread when you're using smaller chips like this, I think is probably a good yeah. way to go. Yeah. Cool. And also certainly um, a bead reamer would be appropriate in this case to sure, even you up could. and you could. tidy up a yeah. hole. Yeah, and especially sometimes the chips, you know, are a little small, so reaming all of them you might crack them a little bit but if your chip is a little bit weightier a little meatier you know you can certainly um, and I want to just throw out bigger. a quick note to Sherry James from Lakeport Sherry, hey, Sherry. I was I grew up in Kelseyville and so <laughs> I know exactly where you live yes Sherry. and you know what whenever Sherry says Sherry from Lakeport Emily I think of you which is funny <laughs> so I think that's I'm great I'm just uh, we want it I think yeah, it's great so I'm going to come in and measure this, and then Grace is going to show her length. And she's measuring right now, and I'm measuring right now, and we're doing two different measuring methods. Right. Now, I have this little, my little paper towel guide that Emily made for me. So I'm going to measure this seven inches. So I've gone seven inches door to door right here. Now, Gracie, you did a different method, which I want to show people, <laughs> which I thought, which is what a lot of us do, yeah, this, right? This is how right? I I'm how not, how I'm not an experienced well, reader per se. You I've are been pretty as long as I've been here. Yes. And I love it. Um, but I, I just kind of measure as I go how mm -hmm. far. So that's how I've been doing it. And right. I actually, so kind of Sometimes just kind of I tie it just one one tie, one mm -hmm. like this, and I keep it taut to see if it'll stretch mm -hmm. nicely over my hand. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah, instead of just measuring it against right. my wrist. And that's a good tip, doing that just little, mm -hmm. um, little temporary knot, mm -hmm. just to see how it goes on. Right. That's great. Um, 
I was going to say something, but now I forgot what I was going to say. Well, <laughs> let's do, let's jump in and you show the knots. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and knot that one up? Sure. So, uh, like I said before, I'm using the, <coughs> the new turquoise light check roller bead here. And I'm going to do one knot. And you can already see it's kind of hidden inside the larger bead. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go three times. And two, notice, you guys, how Grace is not tight. The where she tightened, she didn't t overly tighten it on the first knot. Three. It's on the second and third knots that she really tightens it because she doesn't want to tie any stretch mm -hmm. into this as she's tying it. So then I'm going to pull tight here. I'm going to get your hypo cement. Then, I'm going to yes, be your okay. sous chef. Thank you. Here. And then I'm just going to apply carefully inside. Right. And I'm going to go on both sides. How do you ladies feel about surgeon's oh, knots? Thank you. I'm I use a surgeon's knot as well. Cover that right there. Not yet. I'll mm -hmm. show you what that is. Okay. That's an, or what we call an overhand knot versus a square knot. After that dries, we'll cut away the elastic. Right. The stretch magic. And I like to um, really let my stretch magic sit. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, whenever you glue a knot, you guys, if you're pearl knotting or you're knotting thread into a end tip or a clamshell and you glue that knot in, I wait 24 hours. Yeah. <clears throat> Back in the day, Janice, when we did, I don't know if you remember this, when we did repairs at the store and we'd have, I can't remember her name, uh, Catherine maybe who repaired, she would come in, she would bring the repairs in, she would have done our pearl knots and everything, she would have glued the knots and she would bring us the repairs and we would have to, the next day, cut the tails of the mm -hmm. threads off mm -hmm. because we really, really wanted that thread to rest, that glue to rest. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, on a lot of these bracelets and necklaces that I've strung from 20 years ago, those knots are still holding. And I think it's because we let the knots mm -hmm. rest. <laughs> it's true. Can I um, talk about the talisman and symbols? Yeah, while I prep this up, you oh, talk you want, about. Do you have a question? Yeah, and I'm going to get these because I'm going to close this guy off. So we did stretch therapy as a free tip Friday a few weeks ago, probably even maybe a month and a half to two months ago actually. And um, before we went on, I was like, we don't have a collection that we can go find some cool tear cast charms or other charms that we carry mm -hmm. and along with our knowing one charm and just other symbols like in our vintage find collection we have the I Ching coin which I love and the mm -hmm. Ashanti and so that's actually a collection if you want to make your own stretch therapy yeah. you can go onto that collection and find like eclectic things that you'd like yeah, to put interesting in and, and think of ways that it's personal to you mm -hmm. that's what I like to do I like I'm very I, I like looking into things and not like in a bad way but in a really good way like even when I'm watching movies I'm like oh he's by a window you know like, and I'm like <laughs> right looking oh, at the, in the, the vessels of the eyes of the window <laughs> to the soul or right. something like that right. so um yeah just so that's I, I, I just wanted to, to talk yeah. about the the symbols and talisman project, and the way I was thinking my computer was right here <laughs> the way you can do that is also you can um I it's just under components under and components the yeah in the bottom right on mm -hmm. our website we'll put that of course in the episode notes so uh, yeah and I'm also looking right there at our elastic oh can yeah I one? do yeah let's, are we going to talk about that later I do I want to actually close this off sure sure then I want to move to like totally. these minutes, but totally. don't let me forget totally. so okay you guys I you know me I like to go rogue. So <laughs> I, this is, I've been stringing stretch bracelets uh, for a really, really long time. And I love the kind of the, the versatility and the ease of using this um, stretch magic. But I also, and you'll know, you'll learn this next week when we start to work with Softlex. I also love the power of a crimp tube, okay? And the crimp tube um, we traditionally use with Softlex. But I started using it way back when with Stretch Magic as well. So I'm going to show you how I use a crimp tube with Stretch Magic rather than knotting. And I do knot my pieces, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, and I do glue them. Um, the surgeon's knot uh, question that was brought up a little bit earlier, I'm just going to cut a little piece of this. Yeah. I have the cutters there, Gracie. The surgeon's knot essentially uh, I'm going to use this this one Go here. Well, actually, since this Can is already the surge is not on like one of the sure, colors sure. of elastic. Sure, it might be easier so to see. So everybody huh? could see it. Yeah, good call, JP. 
So a surgeon's knot essentially is what I call an overhand knot or a pearl knot. So I come in, or like the knot that I put at the end of a sewing thread, I come in with my loop, I put my tails through, and then I walk that knot right down. And it's something I do a lot, like if this were a centerpiece and I was gonna wear it on a necklace or whatever, I do that, right? But if this is an ending knot, I don't use a surgeon's knot as an ending knot because if I had a whole, let's say that this was a whole bracelet that was strung, right, you guys? And I would come here and I'd tie that surgeon's knot or overhand knot like that, my little tails would be sticking up right it wouldn't be as easily hidden so if we do what we call the square knot um, you want to do that in pink yeah let me do it in pink thank you if i've come here and let's say that maybe i have a bead or something on here that is kind of holding everything together, right? And then I've strung everything over here. If I do that right over left, left over right, right over left knot, so right over left, and my beads, of course, would all be on there. Left over right. This is where I start to tighten and add my, my really tighten the elastic and then finally one last or a half hitch here left right over left and down you can see it's that little three knots that last one I really tightened down see how when I pull this this cord isn't stretching so this cord kind of maintains its integrity but this one I can really mm -hmm. tighten down and that's where I add my glue Right, thank you. <laughs> right, I'll glue that sucker. Now we'll come right back to this fabric covered elastic because I'll be honest, it's one of my favorite things to string things like this on, but mm -hmm. it does have some limitations. So we'll put this aside for a second. <clears throat> so what I've done here is I've put a regular crimp tube on here and I've actually put two of them. And yes, yes, I know that this is doubled, okay? So just go with me, you guys, on this one, all right? I'm going to go through one of those crimps, and I'm going to get my chain nose plier. I'm going to pop it through. I have a second crimp. Sometimes I only do it with one, but I thought since I had a couple here today, I do it with two, plus you guys would be able to see pretty well. And couldn't you go through that six millimeter fire? You polish? are reading my <laughs> mind, Grace yeah. Nolan, reading my mind. Exactly. See how I go through there. Okay. Now I've got this business over here. See how I'm just going to see that? Gently, gentle. You and the stretch magic are just friends. You're not. You don't want to tug on stretch magic. Stretch magic is, is going to be your friend. Now notice what I've done here, you guys, too. See how that is one of those big hold roller beads? I have a little bit of slack in here, I, but nothing is overly tightened, okay? And that's okay. I have a little bit of room. Now I'm going to very quickly crimp this. We're going to talk about crimping a lot more next week, but I'm going to come in, and don't worry if you don't get this, there's going to be a lot more on crimping, but I'm going to just come in with my little 4-in-1 crimp tool, crimp them firmly, like I mean it, I come in, give those crimps a little hug, that double fiber, that double is in there. And I just come in, I cut that one away, and I cut that one away, and watch what happens with that big old bead. Nice. Now, can, can you flat crimp it? It won't go into the big roller bead, but will the 
flat crimping I, with chain nose pliers possibly damaged? The yeah, I don't. That's why, that's the whole reason, and now you're reading my mind, Janice. That's the whole reason why I crimp that crimp tube with a crimping plier. So I've made a ridge and I fold it. If I flat crimp, if I smash that crimp tube, and we're using crimp tubes, not crimp beads, if I smash it, I'm smashing it super, super tight, and the edges of those crimp tubes can just shear your, your stretch magic right away. But with the gentle, gentle folding <laughs> of this guy, it really makes a nice secure one. And doubled if one gives away, my second one really works. Emily. So we had a few um, far-reaching comments here. All right, so um, let's corral them back <laughs> in. Let's corral them back in. Uh, notes about the surgeon's knot. Mm -hmm. There is some talk here about a alternate sort of style of surgeon's okay. knot. And okay. I, as well, have a different way of, okay. of showing which right. I'd be happy to tell you about okay. it in a moment. All right. Um, when I tie a square knot at the mm -hmm. end of my bracelet mm -hmm. and I take my one cord right going over the left mm -hmm. and circle around, I actually go through it twice. Oh, sure. And when I pull that tight, what I find is that it grabs itself and it holds itself without undoing very oh, much. Oh, that's great. And then I do the left over right mm -hmm. and pull it up mm -hmm. snug. And that seems to work for me pretty oh, well. Oh, great. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Also, question about you were using a standard two by two millimeter I am. tube crimp. I am. It seemed to me that you were very good about getting the stringy material to go straight through it. That's exactly and not right. Not making any kind of not weird, crossed. not exactly. any kind of weird um, machinations through right. the center of the crimp. Crissy cross. So and so that may help it. Yeah. Be sturdy. And that's exactly right. And what Emily is mentioning, and I'll show you guys here yeah, exactly. with this. I'll They're show like you two on this. Next to each other. Yeah. I want both lanes of my of my elastic highway to be right next to each other. And this is true also, and next week you'll see that when we're working with Softlex. Anytime that your string material is coming back through a crimp, we want that to come back through and we want those strands to stay in their lane. If they cross over at all, air, there's air in that mm -hmm. crimp, mm -hmm. and that helps pull everything apart. So keeping those lanes all lined up as I crimp through mm -hmm. is really, really important. That's a great observation, Em. That's exactly right. Mike McDonough backs me up on my search. Mm -hmm. Thank all you, right. Mike. All right. I love it. Um, also, Mike had an interesting suggestion mm -hmm. about the tassel mm -hmm. and to use a little bit of a plastic drink straw to hold the opening of the tassel open. So sort of feed that through oh, first. Oh, that's interesting. Making like a little a stir. sleeve. Right, a little tiny stir. Kind of stir. taking the place of, of the cord of that the comes cord. in it. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You could put your little straw there, mm -hmm. pull it Slide off, Slide it off, and then the you can straw. cut the straw away. We, or... could, we could string it through, mm -hmm. and then we could remove that whole straw from right. underneath. That's right. a great idea. That's awesome. So that's if you're struggling, that might be a good, mm -hmm. good way to trip. A uh, little trick to, to try. Pull that, through. Mm -hmm. that looks really nice. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. That looks really Thanks. Nice. So that's how I use crimps. It's the two by two crimp tubes. Crimp beads don't work the same way. And I do, like you observed, Janice, I fold them rather than flat flat crimp. I want to just have everyone mm -hmm. see yeah. like what's left in the container mm -hmm. after, after you make one. one bracelet. And I use these turquoise chips from another one just mm -hmm. for to show the. the but you can still. Size. We still have a yeah. ton left in here so you can make three to four bracelets out mm -hmm. of these guys. Mm -hmm. One that we've made three bracelets out of already. We measured off of Ivan's wrist, our shipping mm -hmm. manager. Mm -hmm. manager. Mm -hmm. um, whereas we, we had the ohm earth mm -hmm. and then we just strung these on in just different patterns and we threw some chips in just mm -hmm. to you didn't put tassels on. No not tassels. On these. Mm -mm. Okay. No. But, but you can. Great. They come yeah. with tassels. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought it was a, a a really nice kind of. I don't want to s mm. sound like, you know, s sexist, but it seemed like. Men it's a good like guy. A guy. Yeah. They like. Yeah. Maybe Mike out there. What do you think of <laughs> the darker? I mean, any of these can be mixed and matched yeah. and used, but. But we, but we thought it was a great it one, yeah, Just for a guy for guy jewelry. Yeah. Um, one of the things that 
also I wanted to point out some of these, like what Gracie was doing, I'm going to grab these. Oh, yeah. A couple of other things, when Grace was measuring, and I thought this was kind of a cool way, Grace, that you did this, just kind of a quick temporary mm -hmm, strand mm -hmm. to kind of figure out. Right. So talk a little bit about okay. how you, how you, what what purpose these guys sure. were. were yeah, there was another you. one, but was I don't know where it is. No, no, no. I, I think it was assembled, which is fine. But mm -hmm. I wanted to see, because these are our new check roller beads that everyone loves, including myself. I love these guys. Um, I wanted to know, if I just wanted to make a quick bracelet that I threw some things in, how many it would take to wrap around a woman's wrist. I, I measured seven inches um, because when you tie it and it's stretchy, um, and then versus a man. So I used the, I used a oh, basic all the black, yeah, yeah the, those guys. The I remember black, oh, the right black ones. Here. It yeah, is, yeah. but somewhere <laughs> yeah. in our um, piles and piles so, of beads. So yeah, I just quickly since I'm only using one strand when I knot these things, I don't use a doubled over thing. So it's a quick. I did a two knot, I didn't do three, so if I really wanted to keep the elastic, I could, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. It was just to get an idea of how many I could count on a bracelet that fits comfortably mm -hmm. on me. And so one of the things, a if you design. do like these roller beads and you want, and you're using all beads that have holes that are a little bit mm -hmm. smaller or larger, that's where our fabric covered elastic really comes into play. Totally. And one of the things that I do, and you guys have seen me do, do this with other threads, but I've gotten a little bit of our zap glue on my plastic baggie, and I'm making a little zap glue taco here, and using my plastic baggie <clears throat> to really saturate that zap into the elastic because the elastic since this is thicker and then as I pull it out I use the baggie as like a little squeegee this elastic is heavier mm -hmm. it's a heavier cord so when I would fold it over at the eye of a needle it might be too bulky mm -hmm. for some beads but as a single strand it might be perfect so you can see this is starting to really set up and if I were using this type of elastic let's say with this six millimeter fire polish Let's see if I can get it through. It's almost, I'm gonna give it a little yeah, bit of an angle cut maybe. While you're doing that, can I ask you, I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember back uh, Stretch Magic and people wanting to use Crazy Glue. How do you think yeah, the Zap no Glue would work with the Stretch Magic? Will it eat through? Yeah, I would say no. So I would you, keep you the, the GS, GS okay. I would. And this six millimeter doesn't go but you know, try it out. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no. I realized when I was holding this, I didn't finish my thought because I oh, was yeah. just kind of spacing. Um, I was measuring these because they're sold individually for the Czech roller beads, right? And and these were originally packaged for the earrings that you had done a while right. ago. So I wanted to know how many beads. These are ten millimeter beads. Mm -hmm. How many would fit comfortably on my wrist? Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna add a mood bead or a larger bead as a focal point or um, you would use less, but on this bracelet I had 15 or 16, and on the check roller beads for the guy it was 30 with some extra filler in between. Mm -hmm. It was 30 check roller beads, but mm -hmm. I'm just I'm letting you guys know for your own information. Um, for this mm -hmm. guy, I think oh. for women it was also. Eli, <clears throat> uh, just I'm oh, sorry for interrupting. Eli has just joined us. Hi, Eli. Oh, we have to say hi to Eli. Yeah, we ha we're saying hi. Let me come around. <laughs> yeah, come around, Janice. Come around. He's just joining. And for those of you who don't know, Eli is Janice's grandson. So what Eli hi, wants, there he is. <laughs> And that'll give Grace time to figure out how many yeah, roller beads yeah. for Let me count bracelet. Them. But yeah. Okay, I'm saying bye now, Eli. I'll <laughs> see you. I'm going to be there in 30 bedtimes. <gasps> 30 yep. bedtimes. I know. For those of you who don't know, I'm moving to Virginia to be with Eli yeah. and his mommy and daddy. Yeah. And, um, but she's not leaving us completely. No, so I'll be back. Don't be shocked. I'll be back once a yeah. month, but I'm so excited. Yeah. So. <laughs> And there was uh -huh. a couple of little moments I want, don't want to get too far along without mm -hmm. um, clarifying these couple of steps here. Mm -hmm. um, there was some questioning about soft flex versus stretch magic. Okay. And I think sometimes the words sound sort of similar, and so okay. we, that sure. we want to make sure those are too clear. Right. Also, please clarify crimp tubes versus crimp okay. beads. So how many? Uh, let's. Oh, how many sorry. Of our beads there, and then I. I'll 
when Janice came over to say hi to Eli, I lost count, but it was a roughly 28. 20, 20 yeah, beads. Yeah, I'd okay. say 30 just to play it okay. safe because you're going to have filler beads and charms right, in between. Right, And you can see here how when I oh, strung them on nice. the heavier elastic, and if you like the vintage find and this 10 millimeter bead on this fabric covered elastic, you can see that fabric covered elastic takes up a little mm -hmm. more of the hole. So that's when I would use this fabric covered if I were using all large things. Did it go through pretty easily? On yeah, 10 millimeter cool. like a breeze. And awesome. see how nice and stiff the end of that is now with the zap glue, how it's made its own needle. So yeah, one? oh, I can the, the heart. heart. Yeah, let's do it. I'll try the heart. Not quite. Okay. But these 10 mil, cool. you just, and this is how we do it. We call this auditioning the beads, you guys, mm -hmm. to see what fits. So see that there, how it goes in. So let me uh, differentiate, it'll be kind of uh, as we wrap up. There's elastic over there on a spool. Oh, that, that one. one, yeah. And then I'm gonna go grab a soft flex. A soft flex, okay. So the um, Stretch Magic is here. Our um, stretchy fabric covered elastic is here. And next week, we're going to be talking about soft flex. Now, soft flex is a completely different stringing material. It's a nylon coated wire cable. And inside the plastic coating, there is like a cable, like a little twisted, like a bridge, you know, a cable you would use for a bridge or for anything. That same kind of thing, the wires all twisted together. So it's a very flexible, yet sturdy mm -hmm. stringing material. It does, however, it doesn't stretch, okay? So that's the difference between soft flex. So next week when Janice and I talk about soft flex and we start jumping into it, we're gonna be using a clasp with this. With the stretch magic, since it's stretchy, like this, like this. Where's the one I just made? I was gonna slide it on, there it is. It's like this, it just stretches on. So there's no need, and you can see you guys, that's the one I crimped. It's really, it's that's sturdy, really awesome. it's in there. So it's not going anywhere. So stretchy cords don't necessarily need clasps, but with soft flex and soft touch, um, we do need a clasp. And that brings me to a couple of things, you guys, as we start to wrap up. Softflex, um, we're doing a challenge this week with yeah. Softflex, and there's a newsletter that's going to go out tomorrow morning um, that talks a little bit more about that. But Sarah, you mean with the Softflex company, with the Softflex right. company, right. yeah, we're not doing it. They're no, doing they're it. doing it. Yeah, but we're doing it in partner with them. Yes. Um, so Sarah Oler from Softflex, she is going to be broadcasting tomorrow on the Softflex Facebook Live or their Facebook page, uh, doing a Facebook Live, and it's their design challenge. And what we've done is we've sent. Sarah a big box of goodies from beadshop.com and uh, on the Softflex Facebook page uh, Sarah goes live at 1 p.m. Pacific time and she opens the box on air and she takes suggestions from the viewers to uh, create a piece so she's gonna create a piece using our stuff and the Softflex beading wire we'll go ahead and put a link to that on our Facebook page and a newsletter is also going out tonight about that. But it's it's the Softflex um, uh, Facebook page with Sarah Oler, their fantastic Softflex expert who's been with them for years and years. So we can't wait to watch. And we're uh, I know that it'll be a fun entertainment for you guys too. So, oh my gosh, any final thoughts? What, no, a, I was what else do we have to wrap else, up? But it's okay. I'll think about it. All right. I'll think about it. Janice, it's, it's weird Emily, out of the camera. <laughs> anything? I know, isn't it? It's great. It's You've so done weird. It's Gracie, like, thank you so oh, thank much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You yeah. did a great job. Thank you. Thank job. Thanks for today. letting me guys. <laughs> Come on. Hey, guys. Hey, JP. <laughs> so, um, you guys, we always like to. I'm going to have you talk yeah, about. Yeah, I was going to say. Talk about oh, the. Yeah, what are we doing? What are we giving away? <laughs> what did we do? This time I won't get in trouble, Gracie. So, um, at the beginning of the broadcast, or when I when I came on, I was talking about how I went with Janice the first time we went with uh, for this vintage 
finds collection. Right. And so Jen and I went, because Jen's also been, and we picked out these fluorite chips. Actually, Jen noticed them, and mm -hmm. she thought, how cool. They have, like, mm -hmm. this great ombre effect if you want to collect, like, all the purple ones and all the green ones, and then ombre them. Do whatever you want with them, mm -hmm. basically. So um, she picked these out. They're wonderful, and they, they are giveaway are. today. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah, so. So you get a strand of beautiful fluorite chips. So there's two things we've got. I'm gonna give that one yeah. to you, Gracie Grace. So we have a special uh, today for our Facebook viewers. Today is Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017. And you guys know who are well seasoned in our giveaways that our giveaways only last um, about an hour after our broadcast ends. So for those of you who place an order now at about noon Pacific time till about one o'clock Pacific time, um, you can um, add our giveaway code, our giveaway, which is Jen's, Jen's fave, fave yeah. because they're Jen's favorites. Yeah. So that goes into the shipping notes. Right. And we also are giving all day to day um, a 15% discount. So that went out in your newsletter this morning. It was a subscriber and Facebook Live um, code. So this 15% off store wide, it's stretch 15 and it goes in the episode notes. I'm sorry, in the discount, uh, in the, in the discount, discount box. In the coupon. Yeah. Coupon section. code. And it, it'll show, mm -hmm. it takes off the takes percentage. Off. And this one goes into your order notes. Order notes, yeah. exactly right. Jen says hi. And Jen says hi. <laughs> She's looking at her face. Yeah. So yes, Je Janice, you were going to say? No, I just, I, I get confused clarify. with where does the coupon go? Where does the, the mm -hmm. So right when you're in checkout, you have all of your stuff, right? So let's say you bought the fluorite chips and a stretch magic. Um, at the bottom of that, that's the shipping notes. It says, tell us something you'd like us to hear. Mm -hmm. And then you write that's Jen's, Jen's fave. fave. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's okay. where you write the giveaway. Mm -hmm. So let me yeah. just, <clears throat> you didn't buy the fluorite chips. No, no, that's what you bought. Yeah, <coughs> sure. You bought right. You bought your own water, water whatever kit. it is. Mm -hmm. Because everyone yeah, no, out there you're kind right. of you're is right. me, and I get confused. <laughs> totally. So. I'm a customer. So I bought, bought that. This. It comes with the stretch magic. It does. It does. Come with I the just magic. bought that today. I'm checking out. There's a little box that says notes. It says tell us something you'd like tell us, us to something hear. you'd mm -hmm. like yes. us to know. And that's where I'm going to put in Jen's fave. Mm -hmm. And for the next hour, if I'm going to, we're going to throw that in. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to get 15% off your entire order the whole day. You put in stretch, stretch 15, 15 and it's going to give you 15% off, off of your purchase here. Yes. Perfect. Woo, how succinct. I know. Well, good. I feel like that's <laughs> what <laughs> we want to make it clear. No, right? totally. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Good. okay. Sorry. Good job. <laughs> Jen's reading. Jen's reading the comments too. Oh, it what takes a feeling. <laughs> what are they? What's everyone? They saying? are. They're beautiful. They're excited. There's excitement. Uh, there's big thank yous and great jobs to Grace. Yes. Thank you. So, um, and uh, it, there's an interesting, there's a tutorial coming on how to clear up the giveaway and coupon box yeah. confusion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So soon we'll be able to link to that. There um, is. And yes. uh, clarity is a good thing. Yes, yes. Faye, yes. you're correct. All right. So, you okay, guys, that brings, epic, <laughs> that brings our epic stretch magic yes. show to a close, I think. Yeah. I think it was... I think we all learned a lot. You did great. We Thank did. you, Jen. You really did great. great. You guys did great. I have a great free tip Friday coming up on Friday that kind of piggybacks a little bit more information on Stretch Magic. So we'll see you for free tip Friday on Friday at 1030. Right. And we've got some great stuff going on this weekend. So if you haven't signed up for your newsletter, which I can't believe you haven't, if you're still watching this broadcast, go to our homepage. There's a little box that says sign up for our newsletter right on beadshop.com. And next week we start the epic yes. journey into... Exciting. Um, into Softlex. I did, did you? I'm just, so Did excited. you just say the on um, on air where people can find the Softlex episode for them to watch tomorrow yeah. with Sarah? Yeah, on the Softlex. Uh, so go to Softlex.com. Well, or? you can go. You can go right to Softlex on their homepage, but if you go to their Facebook page, the, okay. the link will be okay. right and there. And it will also be in, like you said, the the newsletter that goes out tomorrow. Yeah, okay. so that okay. you'll have the link direct. direct link. And yeah. there's one last thing that I forgot to mention, and I I'm mentioning this a little bit selfishly. 
I am super excited. I have something going on yes, this weekend. Yes, you do. You I have do. an open studio. I do, and it's my first one, you guys. I mean, I've taught a lot. I've done all kinds of things, but it's the first time I'm really inviting the public into my studio to see what I do, and I have a spring collection of jewelry that I've launched and stuff, so I'm super excited. So if you go to my website, if you're local to the Bay Area, you're not doing anything this weekend. It's the whole first weekend of the Silicon Valley Open Studios, and my studio happens to be in Area 1 for the first weekend. So you can go right to my website, it's katerichburg.com, or you can also Google Silicon Valley Open Studios and you'll see everything the month of May. There's some amazing artists. Um, I'm going to be checking out different open studios the rest of the month. So um, if, you're, um, if you're around, stop by. I'll be there. Yeah. Hey, thank you, details. Nikita. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, Kita, for liking. Yes, yes, Kita, thank you. Okay. All right, well, that, yeah, that does it for us. Cheers. cheers. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.